Welcome to a new test and teardown video. Today we're gonna go back in time, all the way back to 1940. This oscilloscope is really 80 years old. Back in the old, old days, they were called oscillograph. <laughs> Not even oscilloscope. A cathode ray oscilloscope made by Allen B. Dumont Laboratories. And this is type 208B. I heard it is not working, but I would like to say thank you very, very much for sending this one to me anyway. It is going to be a lot of fun, even if it does not work. I found full schematics of this unit at a site called Oscilloscope Museum. So thank you very much, guys, for giving me the schematic. And there's the nice demand logo. Quite classic with the knobs. Yeah, we got 18 tubes in this one. So it is quite an amazing design. I think I found, uh, yeah, three rectifier tubes, voltage uh, regulator tubes. And two other tubes used in a power supply. And we got quite a lot of tubes used for deflection, oscillator, input amplifier, and all that kind of stuff. So it's definitely made to be really, really nice. I kind of like the uh, different sections here. They really made the front panel look nice and easy. See? Time base, amplifier, gain. I mean, really, really nice. And the CRT is huge. Look at that. Big and nice size. Yeah, about the whole unit. I don't know if you can see this, but it is huge. You can't lift it like that. You need to have it all the way into your body because it is 22.6 kilos. I just put it on my scale. <laughs> it is that heavy. So I definitely need to uh, open and inspect before I can power this up. Yeah, I think I already know how to open it. Maybe we just take away those two screws and then maybe the whole chassis can be pulled out like that that is kind of what i think at least so far uh, we got two different models i've been reading the b model is the one with the cable like this and the one without the b there and then there's a connector as far as i can see that was all they talked about right that is uh, quite classic for, uh, for the old, old first generation of oscilloscopes. Uh, that will be X and Y um, deflection plates, direct accessible. So if you remove these, you can uh, connect external amplifiers, and that is, of course, your ground potential. And uh, obviously, there's supposed to be some sort of a plastic or isolation stuff here that is screwed in here because, um, you know, the deflection plates, they will be at a, an offset of several hundred volts. So just be careful when you play around with old uh, oscilloscopes like this. And if you don't have a, an isolation, do not touch these, okay? The first look inside. Yeah, we got quite a lot of tubes all over the place. And those are, of course, all the 
old, old 1940 style tubes. But there is another little problem I need to address before I can continue. And that is this funny yellow. See, when I touch it, this can't be good. Is this healthy? It's just all over the place on some metal parts like this. So I think I need to clean this somehow before I can proceed because it is... Also, there's a very intense smell. So I'm looking for a leaked capacitor or a, another kind of problem that could prevent me from power this up. But all tubes looks quite intact so far. A little switch. What is that one doing? Oh yeah, there's another thing that's preventing me from power power up this unit. See, there's a little switch, and that one is pressed in by the chassis. So when you take away the chassis, you disconnect mains. <laughs> so that is why you made this foolproof somehow. See, mains goes in here, and then one end goes to a fuse. The fuse goes to the switch, and then we go on, right? So I need to move this wire to the other side of the switch so I can play with this thing while it is open. Why would you want this little tamper switch? Yeah, maybe to prevent super noobs from pulling around in here. Yeah, I don't know if this is so good. It looks like, oh, this is probably not too good, isn't it? <laughs> I just totally love it. I bet this is the voltage regulator tube. I think they call this V8. And that one is used, of course, to regulate uh, the important high voltage. Some of the wires, they are a little bit infected by fungus or some nasty kind of stuff. Look at that. This can't be good and it can't be healthy to inhale all this since there is a very intense smell going on here. So that will be the deflection amplifiers. Those are all 6V6 tubes. I just cleaned the first one to have a nice view of it. I never clean away the text, so be very, very careful. You can't even touch it or rub it or anything like that. Then it's going to go away, and that will be a very, very big shame to ruin the tube. But you can, of course, clean the dirt away like I just did here right the tube is just the CRT I mean look at the size of that thing it goes all the way to the back here and there's even patent note made in US of A yeah, and the wires up here in the deflection area. See what I said about the deflection connections? No, that one is probably... Ah, this is the supply voltage for the deflection, right? Oh, this makes it even more dangerous to touch anything, but it's just... All those wires are just bad. <laughs> yeah, I need to clean this a little bit before I poke around with it. And as you can see here, oh, that is nasty. But I don't see anything that prevents me from carrying on with this 
test and power up experiment. And this is the left side. Nice full view of everything in here. That will be the input. So the input is of course AC coupled because input goes directly through one of these capacitors here. This is clearly old, old tech, but I love it. That'll be most likely the big rectifier is what I guess it would be. Let's have a look. Oh yeah, look at the pictures here. I should probably take a nice high-res picture and put in, oh, I can even show it like that, right? Component parts location. And that will be the patent numbers. Let's try and do the first power up test using the Vario. I put all knobs in the middle position. Uh, it's on, beam is on. I think this should be it, right? And then I just crank on my mains. I got another little wire here for chassis protection. And then we just crank up the voltage real slow and easy and that is a hundred and the usage is only 30 watts so I definitely dare to continue 180 volts and 50 watts I see this is good this is uh, by the way the filament voltage and we are at 220. I go a little bit down. Yes, I see now the voltage regulator. Yes, that one. That is the voltage regulator. This is a good sign. And uh, let's get intensity. Position. There is no line frequency, internal line frequency, right? So that will be the gain of the amplifiers. Okay, so damn it, there is no picture. But at least we don't have any smoke. And that is definitely a good thing. So when you're playing around with scopes like this, it can be many things when you don't have a picture on. It most likely is the deflection system hammering it all the way up, down or left or right, and then everything else is working. So that will be the first thing I will play with. Uh, that will be um, deflection. And what do you know? I already got a picture. So the problem was definitely deflection. The, the knobs here, they are just way too critical. So it was kind of user error. As you can imagine, I had just the picture outside of the screen and also intensity needs to be very high to give a picture and then focus is here oh here's nice focus see but i have a gain problem okay here's that see there is a picture but of course it is Wide. No, there you go. Super nice and focused. 
<laughs> and that is the gain of yes. And then that is the noise. After a little bit of playing around, I have it now up and running. And here is my little XY plotter. I already showed you a nice little video about how that works. <laughs> There's a little bit of drift. Oh yeah, I don't really like full intensity then. Oh, look at that. And then it is drifting a little bit as well. But I mean, okay, it's 80 years old. So wouldn't you say that is quite all right? Let's try and measure some signals. So this is a one kilohertz sine wave. And uh, here is the fine tuning for the time base. And as you see here, we have a little bit of re-trigger issues and this is how it's done. You simply just align the time base so there's a uh, a match of even harmonics or something like that to the time base otherwise as you can see it is not able to restart right. You can also go slower. Oh look at the fly back. So this is how they blank. They just hammer it all the way out of the screen. Okay, pretty cool. Okay, it goes up. All the way out of the screen. So amplitude also changes how many cycles you have. How nice. <laughs> so this is one kilohertz. Let's try and crank it up. 10 kilohertz. Okay. Oh, that's the same. No problem. Okay, let's say uh, 100 kilohertz and it's going down, right? Okay. We can still trick and we can also, oh, we can make a nice picture here if we don't use full intensity. So that is 100, 2, 3, 3, okay. 300 kilohertz, and then we just crank up the input here, right? And then we go. Oh, we got some problems with the. Ah, look at that! So there's some problems with the f two fastest sweep speeds here. Then it just. they don't oscillate. Okay. Probably just the. some capacitors or the tube or. Some stuff that is not working. Yeah, well, I can't be bothered. But anyway, this is 300 kilohertz and we still have two more ranges. Wow, this was probably quite a fast scope back in the good oldie days. So I'm still playing around with the brightness, the high voltages and stuff like that. Look at that. So now my high voltage is a lot better. And I took out the high voltage rectifier tube. And this one is called V13. And now I got uh, almost the 1100 I need for my cathode system. And all I did uh, was put in two four, 4007 diodes. I kind of like to use them only at maximum half of what they are rated for. So I put two of them in series just to be sure that I don't push those um, diodes. And there's another uh, rectifier tube here. And I will now go through all the different voltages and see if I need to replace some of the other uh, rectifier tubes as well. I think... I'm soon done playing with this thing. <laughs> I totally got it up and running now and all the ranges also works as you can see now. And this is what happens when you are not giving up <laughs> in any possible way. 
And uh, the fun thing is I got a little collection of tubes that I don't need. And it's because of the, the power supply and uh, these tubes are not as good anymore as they used to be. If we look at the whole schematic here, so this is the, yeah, everything there is. To, uh, um, the fun thing is that they called the tubes uh, V1 and V2 and V3 and V4. If we look at the upper left, that is the input stage. We should probably um, zoom in a little bit. So it's easier to see what we're talking about. So they are all the same type of um, tube. And the fun thing is um, the first one is just a cathode follower using very high impedance resistors. And uh, the cathode follower just uh, amplifies the, the impedance and the, the drive capability to the next stage, um, the V2 stage. And in that stage, this is where we have um, a lot of gain. And you can see we got 250 ohms uh, in the cathode to ground and we got 8K uh, at the top. And obviously that will create a, a lot of gain. And then it goes to V3. And it, again, uh, we got 8K in the top and 250 ohms at the bottom. And again, a ton of gain. And then last, a cathode follower. So we can now um, drive the next stage. And then... Um, the final stage is, of course, a differential uh, balanced uh, amplifier. Uh, so it's driving the deflection circuits. Uh, yeah, it's differential, obviously. And uh, here the uh, single-ended input goes to uh, pin 5. That is the grid of V5. And uh, uh, pin 5 of V6 is just connected uh, directly to ground. The two uh, cathodes, they are connected together and then 400 ohms to ground. So here you have a differential uh, amplifier and uh, 200, uh, I mean uh, 25k uh, in the anode. So again, we got quite a lot of gain here as well. And then uh, there is a circuit uh, with inductors and capacitors and that is uh, obviously for a frequency compensations and to make this as wide a uh, frequency band as they could easily do. At the schematic uh, bottom left, we see the oscillator. So the oscillator um, is just a one single uh, triode and there's a funny um, connection between uh, its cathode and its anode using different capacitors. This is where you select the different speeds. Uh, and then you have a charge uh, resistor that goes to the positive supply. And this uh, generates a, uh, an oscillator and the grid goes to the uh, external or internal synchronization or the test signal is uh, just uh, the filament uh, signal, by the way, a sine wave uh, line frequency signal. And this you can, of course, also select for your synchronization. And uh, like I showed uh, previous in the video where we tested how all this uh, worked, then we can uh, see that, of course, you need to fine tune the correct uh, sweep frequencies or sweep times to the incoming signal. And that is a uh, a way it will synchronize easier to the incoming signal, right? And then we have a V8 and a V9. Uh, again, two cathode follower uh, just for impedance uh, amplification. And then we have a DC output of V9 that goes to uh, X position potentiometer. And then uh, this is almost the same as the the vertical amplifier, but here's just the horizontal uh, amplifier differential uh, pair of 
tubes that uh, gives a, a nice uh, differential drive to the deflation uh, plates in the CRT. If we look uh, again at the schematic and uh, look at the right side, we see the power supply. So the power supply uh, is also made using three tubes and they are um, yeah, obviously rectifier tubes. All of them are double uh, rectifier tubes. If we look at the top one called V13, it is an RCA 80. Uh, it is a directly heated uh, double diode. And um, the fun thing is uh, this thing, is, the filament is five volts and two amps so that is 10 watts and we got two of these right so this is just 20 um, 20 watts is what i wanted to say so 20 watts is wasted just for those two rectifiers for the for the high voltage part here and uh, my high voltage was a little bit low so uh, of course i just put in uh, two uh, diodes to uh, 4007 uh, diodes in series for the high voltage and now my high voltage is nice and fine and uh, the other uh, two voltages they were also a little bit on the low side so I did exactly the same on V14 uh, I needed two diodes because it's a yeah a double half wave uh, rectifier so I just put in two diodes exactly as I shown here on the schematic. And uh, the V15 is a uh, also a double, but it's a uh, indirectly heated uh, 6.3 volts and 0.6 uh, amp uh, rectifier. So it's about three watts, uh, right? So that is uh, also saved by uh, changing this um, tube to a normal diode and now uh, all my voltages they're nice and fine and uh, my scope works again so uh, yeah that is uh, really nice and fine and here is uh, my final implementation of the different diodes and that one and it's difficult to get light in there as well so that's my little double rectifier Ooh, that one is nice and shiny and here is my negative 500 volts also I was not super happy about the voltage ratings of the tubes they used and the circuit here because we got 1100 uh, volts and the tube is not really designed for this kind of voltage so they're kind of overdriving, uh, yeah, and they're doing that with more or less all of those um, tubes, uh, by the way. So, um, yeah, I'm not super impressed about that, by the way. But that is all I wanted to show you about this fantastic 80 years old oscilloscope. And I'm quite happy to add this to my collection of uh, funny old stuff. So uh, thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.